you groovy little fuckers welcome to another infinity factory i'm richard metzger i'm your host and co-hosting tonight will be brian pang my cohort from uh, disinformation brian how you doing i'm doing great thanks yeah what do you have to say for yourself uh good evening okay okay <laughs> you're, you're, you're a man of few words so tonight's guest is robert sterling the editor of the conformist a an email conspiracy theory uh magazine that comes out once a week robert are you there yeah i'm here how you doing I'm doing pretty good. Uh, actually, great since the Cowboys lost. Oh, really? Yeah. I, whenever the Cowboys lose, I, I'm very happy. Okay. Well, a, an auspicious start for the show then. So you are the editor of the of the Conformist. Uh, yes, that is correct. Actually. Uh huh. I think I heard about it. I guess it, Brother Blue and Doug Rushkoff told me about your your easing simultaneously. Yeah, they they uh, they both have been subscribers and contributors. Uh, basically, it started, you know. In April 19th of 1996, the one-year anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing, mm -hmm. but it really didn't take off really big until November of last year when I started doing it regularly, and it's got, I think, a pretty huge following. And how many, uh, how many people actually get each issue of the Conformist? Well, on my mailing list, it's now just uh, past 2,000 people, but wow. there's there's like SNET News sent it out and the CTRL list. Uh, you know, other lists send it out, so conceivably every person in the planet reads it by now. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Th things are getting weirder. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so. I'd like to think I had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, what? Tell me something about you know, what what sort of got you into conspiracy and who whose well, writing sort of brought you into it. Well, I, I guess what it was is you know I want to be a filmmaker and a writer, and uh, you know I'm interested into reading unusual things and uh, seeing unusual things because it certainly helps helps you out in style and of course there was Mondo 2000 which only in retrospect did I realize was really a major conspiracy magazine even though mm -hmm. it obviously was there I, I always thought of it more as a cyberpunk magazine mm -hmm. which was uh, I guess the label that was put on it and uh, then I heard about this book by Jonathan Vankin called uh, Conspiracies cover-ups and crimes. Right, and, they, uh, they excerpted that in the uh, the conspiracy issue of Mondo. Yes. That's where I yeah, heard of it, too. I, was that you who actually did that? Pardon me? Did you have anything to do with that that uh, excerpt? No, no. I, I, I have only known R.U. for about a year. Oh, I see. So, no. Yeah, I... Uh, That's where I found out about Jonathan's book, is what I'm saying. Well, I actually heard about it from, of all places, the Los Angeles Times, one of the more dishonest fascist tools going. Mm -hmm. And uh, the interesting thing is they gave it a very good review, the book. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the, but how they described it was it was a book that, of course, explored paranoid conspiracy theories that, of course, no one would take seriously and implied that the whole book was about, you know, from a more dismissive viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And when I then I saw the Mondo 2000 piece myself uh, later that year, and I was kind of mystified because... It certainly sounded like he was not as dismissive as they were making it sound to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, after you get into conspiracy theory, it, it all makes sense why they would make it seem like he was dismissing it when, in fact, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. I love that book because he goes so far into what makes these people tick. Yeah. And I suppose if he was going to do an update of that book, he would have to have a chapter on you now. Uh, I would hope so, but, uh, y you know... He's actually had a lot to do with uh, getting me to have some sort of following because uh, he even was the one who recommended me to CNN, mm -hmm. Crossfire. And I, although I was busy surfing that day, I uh, certainly do owe him a thanks still. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're out there, uh, John, thank you once again. Mm -hmm. I hope he's listening. We had him on as a guest on a few weeks ago. Yeah. Guys, we're going to take a break now, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Robert Sterling of The Conformist. Great. Stay locked on. i 
bedroom. Catalog, record, now. I got him, got him, guys. Okay. Baby, Hold on. what are you doing? Come to bed. What's the matter with you, baby? Now? Yeah, now. This is David Friedman's own of SonicNet.com. You're listening to the Silicon Alley Reporter. All right. The advantages of Automat over conventional magazines. No smelly perfume. No subscription cards falling into your lap. No ink on your fingers. And no trees get hurt. Automat. Automat.com. This is Fred Reed Runberry, right here, listening to GoPoetry.com. Hi, 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 hi! Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Menachem told me to listen. I listened. I liked it. I told my other friends in Brooklyn, and I made one line. I'm going online. Freak. 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 Electronic music form. Freak. Freak is good. Freak. 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 House, techno, Ilbian, Ambient, and Jungle DJ. Freak. I want my money back. No Left side of the pure radium, popular, to continual labor and enjoyment. So there we are, constant thought, take us by bounty. We may in our particular orbit give out light and light, sustenance and joy to them that revolve about us, without diminution of substance or insulting forever. Okay, we are back on the Infinity Factory. I'm sitting here with my friend Brian Pang from Disinformation, and we are talking with Robert Sterling of The Conformist. Uh, it's a <clears throat> email news newsletter magazine that comes out once a week. And uh, Robert, yes, hi. So you know you you have a lot of diff- you have a lot of sort of stellar contributors. Oh yeah, yeah. I w- I would uh, say that I'm very surprised by that. When I when I started this, I had a theory that. I would get like a few things from other people, and the most of it would be my writing. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the idea because I figured I'd get you know three or four th- things a month. Well, right now I get like uh, well I get 200 letters, but like 20 about 20 pretty decent things a day to choose from. And the bad side is now I have to become even more discriminating in what I include. But the good news is is that there's a lot of the cream of the crop that comes in regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who, are, who are some of the people who are uh, sending you some of the better posts? I know uh, you, you had recently a Brother Blue special, which oh, I thought yeah. was great, well, and I forwarded that to a bunch of people because it was good to have some of the Holy Blue postings well, in a one you, digest that I could send out. Yeah, I'm a big follower of Brother Blue. In fact, I don't know if he's going to revoke that or if he was just kidding, but he actually gave me an honorary brother, brotherhood uh, earlier this year. Oh, rock on. I'm a, I'm a brother myself. Yeah, well, uh, congratulations, fellow Thank you. brother. And, 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 um, and it's good to meet you, fellow brother. I think we should, just to clue everybody, we're talking about brotherblue.org, which I think is, it's easily m- my single favorite site on the web right now. Yeah, I, I it's would amazing. Def- definitely put it right there at the top. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I've kind of stumbled on him through the Internet, mm-hmm. through uh, postings on, on news groups, and you get a r- real quick picture of, Looking, looking at internet news group postings, mm-hmm. that uh, most people are not very good writers. I don't mean to diss anyone in yeah, particular, he's just a, in general. Yeah, the Holy Blue one is a great writer. Yeah, him. Uh, he was definitely one of the few that stuck out. Him mm-hmm. and Lisa Pease actually were the two where I said right away, these people are great writers. Yeah, Lisa Pease does the real history. Yes, that is correct. Right, the real the history, real history site. Right. I unfortunately don't have her website uh, right in front of me, but. Uh, do a search. I'm sure you'll find it, and you'll love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's um, really but yeah, cool. Brother Blue is certainly someone mm-hmm. that uh, I hope his cult grows uh, grows larger. Because mm-hmm. if anyone deserves to have a cult following, it is Brother Blue. Oh, it's 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 brilliant stuff that he's doing. He is he's sort of 
defined and identified a very legitimate new sort of you know magical current yeah or or, or, or new area to research and there's a very amusing tone to him that uh, I think uh, is really good. He has a style where when you read it, it you can say this is blue. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Cy- cyber Sufism. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. He 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 does like that term. He's mm-hmm. he's definitely been one of the people who've regularly been contributors. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Constantine is of course one of the people that I'm always proud to have mm-hmm. on have me forward me his stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. He's the writer of Psychic Dictatorship in the USA and the recent uh, Virtual Government. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a real gr- good, I'd like to think of him as a friend and more importantly he's a real good writer who I'm really uh, flattered to, to mm-hmm. have my, his no. stuff included in my magazine. So do you actually know him? You've met oh, him, yeah, or it's just yeah. a... we we shoot the shoot the shit every now and then uh-huh. for a couple of hours. Well, uh, you know, it's it's funny. You always have an idea of what these guys, like Alex Constantine, or you know, various conspiracy theory writers, are like. What's he like? Um, well, he's actually a very uh, the one I guess negative thing you could say, or it's a positive thing in another way, is that he's very combative. Uh-huh. He likes to argue. Right. And you know, you, me, and him agree on a lot, but. He almost looks for things to argue just so he can yell at me. Huh. And uh, naturally he finds them, but... All right, well, it keeps his blood move, you know, moving. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons he's such a good uh, conspiracy researcher is he's looking for a fight. Right. Um, but, but the other good thing about him is, uh, you know, we have a lot of the same interests, uh, mainly, mainly women. We like to talk about women. Aha. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Little secret for all you people out there, Alex is into uh, Asian women, so if there's any Asian women into conspiracy theorists, contact him and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. He's got yellow fever. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, Ken Thomas doesn't really so much put in articles that often, but he does definitely give some nice commentary and some great plugs for his incredible uh, steam shovel site mm-hmm. and hopefully the return of his steam shovel press magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, has the magazine suspended publication right now? Well, I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it is, but it, it's not so much uh, anything more than business matters that the company that was producing it or was printing it has folded. Oh, right, I heard about that. Yeah, but you know, the magazine was doing great, and uh-huh. I don't think there should be a problem for it to return soon. And mm-hmm. you know, the sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty cool magazine. I think I have all of them from issue four, I guess. Yeah. Ken, yeah, Ken Thomas actually um, sent me an email asking me how to how to check out the show live, well, and sa- saying that he was your biggest fan. Yeah, well, I, I I'm flattered by the uh, by that commentary. Yeah, it's a really Ken- nice compliment. Yeah. Yeah, Ken, if you're out there, uh, ditto, I'm your biggest fan, and uh, hope you're listening right now, dude. Um, yeah, and I guess some of the other names, mm-hmm. uh, Bill Cooper, who's a guy who some people think is a controversial fellow, he he regularly puts in some stuff in the magazine. I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, now he's the guy that wrote Behold the Pale Horse. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. And uh, me and him just have kind of hit it off, and... I'm really happy for that because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I really enjoy his magazine. I really enjoy his views. Wait, what magazine does he have? Um, he actually has, gosh, what is it called? It's called Ver- Veritas? Oh, yeah, right. I know what you're talking about. I've, I went to his website recently, actually. It's, it's gotten much bigger than it used to be. Yeah. Is he still doing those shortwave radio broadcasts as well? Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing whatever he can, and he was... He was on uh, a conspiracy theory mailing list for a while, just sending out stuff left and right, mostly dissing other people on the thing, which was, it's always a kick to see uh, Bill Co- Cooper badmouth other people. Because mm-hmm. no one is, uh, I think, better at badmouthing people. Um, <laughs> the, there's two other people who I've really been proud to have in the magazine in particular, and that is um, Barry Chamish, who... Uh, is an Israeli investigator who uh, actually has a history of investigating UFOs in Israel. Mm-hmm. But he's made a real big thing about uh, investigating uh, the assassination of Iqbal Rabin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I saw this stuff, I knew he was on 
definitely the right track mm -hmm. more than on the right track he was just nailing it and this is when I kind of was starting the magazine up in, again in November and I really credit uh, Barry for getting this magazine to really a following because you know his stuff is very solid and it, in fact it's turned out to become a book deal which uh, the book should be publishing early 98 through Feral House mm -hmm. so uh, well, what, now, how, I, now what has he said about the assassination of Rabin. Oh, okay, yes, that that well, would if help. You, if, yeah, it? yeah, if you, yeah, just just sort of boil it down in a nutshell for the listeners. The boiling down is that it, the assassination was a conspiracy. Uh, no, shock I mean horror. Is, is that yeah. It was actually an inside job. The guy who actually did the alleged killer actually was firing blanks and didn't actually kill him. Hmm. Uh, there was actually the Shin Bet guard that murdered Iksar Rabin. And that this involves the uh, the establishment of Israel and a basically an attempt to uh, to subvert um, subvert the policies that were that were going on. He, he's more from the point of of that this was more of an attempt of the New World Order clique, the uh, the internationalists, to uh, make sure that use this as a way to to uh, have some sort of international law going on kind of a thing. I, mm -hmm. It's hard for me to really explain, but the more important fact is that it was an inside job um, and that the man was basically a brainwashed patsy. Hmm. Um, it's going to be a very good book. I've read a lot of the chapters already, and uh, I definitely recommend it. I think it's going to be one of the big blockbuster conspiracy books of 98. Hmm. So um, aside from the contributors, who are some of the higher profile people who you send the list out to? Um, well, Are You Serious is, of course, one. Uh -huh. um, I don't know exactly what he thinks of it, but I... Oh, I'm uh, sure he loves it. Yeah, I'm, I get the feeling. He's, I'm sure he's just a busy man. I, uh, you know, he obviously is a great influence of mine, so whatever he thinks, I, I think very highly of. Uh -huh. uh, Oliver Stone's up, and his office actually get it, too. Oh, really? Yeah, he, uh, and I've even spoken to his office, and he's even said how he gets a real kick out of it. So, oh, that's uh, funny. Yeah, um, well, you know, so this, one of the more this... famous quote-unquote conspiracy theorists, mm -hmm. although that's a little unfair perhaps to Oliver, because he's much more than that. Yeah, well, you um, know, disinformation was actually going to be called, you know, something along the lines of Oliver Stone's disinformation. Oh. It was it was sort of developed in, with a, a TCI subsidiary company as a project for for him to sort of be the executive producer of. Really? Yeah, and then the, the, the there was this whole thing where TCI closed down the, the, the company that we were working for, developing it, and, you know, and obviously his... Yeah, you know, he didn't want to he, John Malone. Yeah, right, but, you know, and so Oliver didn't, didn't want, rightly so, didn't want to put his name on something that could have been seen as, you know, having a dicey future. They, their, their commitment to it was uncertain. Yeah, yeah. well, I, uh, I can't necessarily blame him, I mean... No, no, neither do I. Yeah. Not at all. And uh, from what I understand, you too gets the magazine. Oh, really? I don't know if they actually read it, but I, I've been told that uh, told that uh, some, sometimes they read it. I, I don't know if that's true or not. That makes sense. Uh, Ron Jeremy, the, uh, the the hedgehog. Yeah, the porno star. So yes. I do have one one reader who can suck himself off. <laughs> well, that's. I guess there's something I, I, for him. I suppose disinformation does too, but you know, so <laughs> that's so it's uh, those are I guess some of the more famous people. Okay, so we're gonna take another break, and uh, when we come back, I want to start. I want to ask you about some of your your the conspiracies that you've been sort of propagating lately. Okay. So stay tuned. We're talking to Robert Sterling of the Conformist here on the Infinity Factory. <laughs> Live chat, real audio. There's a flower in the hour. Input output input output. My ports are refreshed. Throbbing with sodo. I never knew an interface could be so into it. 
lasting, lasting relationships with the process on single. I'll access you if you access me. Would you like that? Connect with single. Connect. Connect with me. You know what is my input. We are one network forever on single. Hi, this is Sharon Middendorf from Motor Baby. Make sure to tune in to Rock and Roll Night, Tuesday on Pseudo Online Network. Rock and Roll Night on Pseudo Online Network. This is W.C. Fields, the Ram LZ, coming up with the kick it. Kicking it live. Kicking it live. Kicking it live. Cooling out. Checking it out. Rocking the house. Come and check out the cool out right after 88 Hip Hop. Come on and let me see ya. Let me see ya. See ya. See ya. See ya. Blue eyes, handsome Kennedy, athletic, ski instructor, Harvard MBA, very successful. I'm a great combination of what you need with the best massages and conversation you would ever need. So call me at 681. All right, we are back on the Infinity Factory with Robert Sterling of The Conformers. Robert, are you hanging out? Yes, I am. Okay, so I wanted to, to talk about s some of the topics. You've been having a lot of sort of specials that have been coming through lately about various things, and one of the, one of the things that uh, we talk about a lot in this show is the Montauk Project. Yes. So um, is, there, is there something that uh, has come to light recently about the Montaukian madness that you wanted to uh, talk about? Well, uh, you know, the main thing is that there's been this series by uh, this one guy. And, uh, gosh, let me let me find this here. But the the basic idea of his series is that the uh, Montauk Project or the area of Montauk is apparently very near TW800 uh, explosion. Hmm. And the idea that actually the explosion of TW800 involves Montauk. How so? Um, well, that apparently they were testing some sort of high-tech uh, missile, perhaps even a nuclear missile, according to some, which mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's necessarily true. Well, but, here's, uh, here's the thing that, that I mean, it, about the Montauk experiment. If that was truly what happens, why didn't they just send, put somebody in the Montauk chair, send him back in time, have him fix it up? No one would be the wiser, right? Uh, you mean to actually go back in time and say, don't do it? No, yeah, just to stop it from happening. I mean, if, if, obviously these guys have this capability. Why didn't they just go back in time? Well, I guess the idea is maybe uh, maybe they are actually glad it happened. That's one possible theory. Right. The other, I guess, way to maybe explain that is when you go back in time sometimes, uh, or not, not sometimes, but when you go travel in time, the path that you go into isn't necessarily the same path that you're from. And so it causes, it in essence doesn't necessarily affect the time time uh, stream that you're involved in, but it affects another time, time stream. Okay. Does that make any sense? No, of course not, but... Um, <laughs> well, it does if you're, uh, if you're stoned on LSD or pot or something. As, as presumably some of these Montauk boys are. Yeah, that's... Well, I've heard that a lot of them are uh, real sketchy characters. Well, um, I, I've, I've, I've met a few. I would, I would not say that... Yeah, yeah, sketchy sounds right. Sketchy sounds about yeah. right. There was a gal on the show a couple weeks ago, Chica Bruce, who has res been researching a book on the Montauk Project and talking to these two guys and you know writing a book about their story and then she sort of now feels that she may have been in the ex Montauk experiment herself yeah well you know who am I to argue with her yeah I, me too I mean anyways if there's a show that we did on that you might want to check that out sometime yeah I, I definitely will um yeah that's I guess one of the more interesting things that mm -hmm. uh somehow two conspiracies that are actually connected. It's, it's kind of like Reese's peanut butter cups where you have chocolate and peanut butter and you put them together and 
you know, it turns out something even better. Well, there's a there's a third conspiracy involved in all this too, because the things Montakian overlap a lot with the Babylon working. Yeah, yeah, that's actually. Uh, now I don't know how true that one is, mm -hmm. but apparently it involves uh, Crowley. Uh, he was at Stonehenge at the time, going through like these rings and stuff. Am well, I right on that one? Well, it, it's, it's so says the Montauk experiment books. Right. Uh, you, you'd be hard pressed to find that information corroborated anywhere else, including Crowley's own diaries. Right. You know. Well, I, I, I mean, can I mean, say that. Uh, who might argue with it? Again, well, I, I mean, I will argue with it because I mean, it's, it's, it just seems so outlandish and far out. But anyways, go, go on. No, uh, no, I, I understand that. For me, it, it's so outlandish that. And entertaining that. Sure. I, I'm all for it. I'm yeah. all for people saying it, even if it is totally untrue. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing there either. No, anyway, I, so, I, I'm. Don't think we're in any disagreement on anything on this one. <laughs> yeah. So, so how do, how do these? How does it tie in? Uh, well, the idea, I guess, is that that uh, at Montauk, which was nearby, they were doing some kind of high-tech weaponry testing, and somehow, either intentionally or accidentally. A uh, one of the high tech tests created the explosion of TW800, and this is what the actual cloud of secrecy is about. Mm. I don't know. I mean, the guy who wrote it was John Quinn, and he's a pretty interesting guy, and he he definitely put some good speculation. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't really have an opinion on that one, but uh, right. I find it important enough to at least. To at least repeat. Uh -huh. Now you've you've actually put some Babylon working stuff on the conformist lately. In fact, I think that you forwarded to your list the thing that I wrote for Twenty One C Magazine, the Jack Parsons Antichrist Superstar. Well, piece. I would have been happy to, but out of respect for you and out of respect for the uh, Twenty One, the what is it called again? Twenty One. Twenty One C. Oh, I thought it went out to the list. I thought that uh, the the blue well, one I, I passed it on. I was going to, but okay. then I found out that you, it was for publication, and I. I respected your copyright rights and your ability to obtain money for it. Okay, yeah, you can send it out sometime soon. I think. Well, I'd be happy. To <laughs> I thought it was. It I was thought you already crazy. had. So yeah. Good title too. Uh, it's it's on. It's actually on Brother Blue's site. I, I'm sure it was. Now. He uh, he was uh, very excited about the piece, if I remember correctly. You know, you, Robert, you may as well send it out after this. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, go go ahead. So. All right, I'll send it out. Like then. I said, it's already on the web, so do it. But um, uh, now you have so you've been doing you've been putting out some Jack Parsons stuff. What's what's the, res the response you've been getting about that? Uh, you know, it's one of those things that people really find interesting, and I don't know if you've really explored this angle. But what I found interesting about the whole Jack Parsons Babylon workings is, if you've seen the movie Stargate, mm -hmm. um, the whole idea, of the plot that there's a uh, that there's this gateway to this different world and that it's actually like Babylon and everything like that, uh, that, that I, I think in a lot of ways they very loosely, I mean very, very loosely based the whole story of the movie Stargate mm -hmm. on uh, the Babylon work, which is interesting since the same people behind Stargate later did Independence Day. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, huh. and uh, now they're doing Godzilla. So it's one of those examples of how pop culture has cryptically sealed within it a uh, hidden truth, a hidden deeper truth, that somehow uh, this, this uh, sci-fi movie is actually involves a whacked out experiment between a uh, APL scientist and L. Ron Hubbard, mm -hmm. and of course our, our favorite, Aleister Crowley. Right. So that's, uh, that's what I find the most interesting thing about it, that mm -hmm. uh, you have this film which is very loosely based on that mm -hmm. take a look at the movie stargate and even though the plot is kind of pedestrian and it's not the best told story uh you can see see the definite link mm -hmm. what, what 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 again what have been some of the reactions that you've gotten to the information that you have put out on the list about well, Jack i think uh i think it's one of the stories that always gets very positive reactions because for the most part people don't know about it right um, yeah, he's rather an obscure character, you're right. Yeah, you know, and, and here you have this story which happened in the middle of the century, um, which involves the man who later later founded perhaps the most powerful uh, religious, religious invention of the 20th century, Scientology. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Crowley, who is perhaps the 
uh, the Einstein of the occult. Yeah, the most important occultist of the 20th century, and the man who basically was talking about the dawning of the new age of Horus, Aeon of Horus. Mm -hmm. And you have, uh, of course, Jack Parsons, who is arguably the most important rocket scientist of the 20th century. Well, well, he well, so he was instrumental in the development of solid rocket fuel. Right. Yeah. That's well. True. Don't, yeah, exactly. Don't, yeah, and let's not leave he, out Marjorie Cameron, though. You combine those yeah. those three fellows, and uh, you know, I, I'd say this is perhaps the most uh, interesting untold story of the 20th century. Untold in the sense that it's one of those stories that if it was better known, people would just eat it up. Mm -hmm. It's it's a story dying to be exploited by someone, and I'm hoping to exploit it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually I'm sort of shocked that someone hasn't written a Babylon working movie because it has so many elements. That you know, it doesn't have to be sort of a cheesy, you know, Julian Sands, you know, <laughs> type of B movie flick. It could be a, a really interesting, you know, weird psychological thriller. It could have all sorts of espionage elements in it too. It's very it's a very intriguing weird tale. You know, someone should uh, forward the idea to David Cronenberg, because that really does seem up his alley. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Or to Oliver. Yeah, uh, I think Oliver would definitely be interested, too. I will hit him up sometime. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely... Uh, anything about uh, uh, Babylon, I definitely want people to forward it to me. In fact, maybe I should give my email address and everything right now. Yeah, that's yeah, and, and this is how people can actually subscribe to the list. So uh, go ahead, and give it. It's uh, Robolini at AOL dot com. It's that's R O B A L I N I at AOL dot com. So if you send an email to Robolini, you can ask Robert to put you on the mailing list, and that's how it happens. It's not an automatic listserv. You have to sort of put them on your list, right? Yeah. Although that is certainly changing. Um, I'm also going to have hopefully before the end of Christmas. Uh, before the New Year's, a uh, www.conformist.com. Mm -hmm. I may add that conformist is with the K, not with the C. Right. Okay, Rob, we're going to take another break, and okay. we will be back with Robert Serling of the Conformist with a K, not a C. Stay tuned to the Infinity Factory. Plus the students who had been specially educated and trained were to be used as agents and placed behind the scenes of all governments as experts and specialists so they would advise the top executives to adopt policies which would, in the long run, serve the secret plans of the Illuminati One World Conspiracy and bring about the destruction of the governments and religions they were elected or appointed to serve. Do you know how many such men operate in our government at this very time? It's sassy, body, racy, naughty. The show that explodes your nodes. Featuring your hosts, Shannon O'Kelly White and Adam Roth. Only on the Pseudo Online Network. Esoterica, the kitschy blend of comic book news and dish, toys, sci-fi, and monster info, movie talk, music, and of course, martinis. With your host, Sean Fernald, only on the Pseudo Online Network. Why are you stalling? Click chat, 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 on down. Chat, 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 a worldwide hip-hop radio show. This show features updates and current events, interviews with celebrities in hip-hop, demo and talent showcasing, hip-hop history lessons with living legends and pioneers, a DJ spinning top choice beats and rhymes. And check this out, there's a new show every week. 
Check out 88 Hip Hop every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The fattest hip hop show on your internet dial. 88 Hip Hop, save the last beat for Pseudo Online. Okay, we are back on the Infinity Factory. I'm here, sitting here with Brian Pang, also of Disinformation, the mayor of Brytown himself. That's right. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a man of few words. And we're talking with Robert Sterling, editor Hello. of The Conformist. Hey, Robert, are you there? Yeah. So, um, one of the topics that you've been sending some uh, information out in, about in The uh, Conformist is food irradiation. Yes, uh, this is actually a story which has been around for quite a while. Um, in fact, uh, it's been warned about 10 years ago when uh, Harvey and Marilyn Diamond's book, Fit for Life 2, they were talking even then about the whole idea of using food irradiation to uh, supposedly make our food safer and the dangers that are behind that and uh, what, what, the, what's more the, importantly, the economic powers that are behind that. Mm -hmm. um, actually, last week, a week and a half ago, it was finally okayed by the FDA to use food irradiation to uh, treat meat and other goods, you know, other food goods, supposedly to save us from dangerous bacteria and viruses. Um, and the funny thing is I kind of saw this coming along earlier this year when they had these cover stories about about uh, the dangers of our in our meat. Yeah, and the E. coli scare and yeah, mad, mad cow disease and things like that. And if you read in Time and Newsweek uh, articles about them, they always included in these cover stories some basically puff piece by some some uh, you know scientist who's got to be getting paid by the nuclear industry, saying the real answer, of course, is that we irradiate our food, which has been totally proven to be safe, mm -hmm. which uh, actually is not the case. Um, an internal 82 study, I believe it was 82. Uh, by the FDA found that out of 413 studies on food irradiation, only 1% showed that it was safe. Wow. And, and what, what does food irradiation, what actually happens? They're using nuclear waste, correct? Yeah, that's, well, that's what they don't actually say, but it's, it is the treatment of food with nuclear waste. Uh, cobalt-60 and cobalt-137, I believe, is what's used. This is the byproducts of creating you know, nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. Hmm. And uh, I think everyone should stop right then and there. Yeah, that certainly gives new meaning to the words recycle. <laughs> yeah, it's um, oh. not the kind of thinking green kind of attitude that uh, I think most people would <laughs> celebrate. You know, no, and I think that right then and there, once when people realize we're dealing with nuclear waste here, I think they should stop and say, now, does this sound like a way to actually feed the world and make us better, or does this sound like a bad idea? Right, very bad idea. And, um, you know, once when you look at it from that angle, the whole logic of it is just just crooked. I mean, does anyone really think that the nuclear industry sat down one day and said, gosh darn it, we're really concerned about world hunger and helping people. If there was only a way that we could figure out helping stop starvation, let's just... Let's just spend money on a study and figure out how we can help feed the world and then just by accident they happen to stumble onto their own nuclear waste hmm you know it, 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 it was all, it was there in their own backyard yeah, yeah. Sure convenient. Hey, gosh imagine that we we searched every possible solution and guess what we found out you know more the more logical explanation is that they had this nuclear waste that they wanted to get rid of mm -hmm. so they figured well why don't we put it in people's food? Yeah, no, let's resell it to another industry and yeah. Yeah, convince people it's good for them. Yeah, and, and that's really what happened. And when, when you find out uh, all the, as usual, suppressed tests, which show, uh, show the dangerous side effects of this, um, you know, it's very much like the story of NutraSweet and very right. much like what's going on what? with uh, actually hydrogenated oil, which is... Another scandal, which I have been writing about, you know, in in my own spare time, and right. eventually I'll I'll 
have a piece on that. Well, we had John Stauber on the show, and he's the author of the a co-author of the book Mad Cow USA. It, it it can happen. The nightmare can happen here. I think is the subtitle, and um, that is a, an extremely scary book. Have you read that? Um, to be honest with you, no, I haven't. I have heard about it, and I've heard it's a very good book. Uh huh. But it's it's interesting that. Um, well, what, what the Oprah, there's one of the things that he talks about at length in the book and talked about it on the show is that Oprah Winfrey is being sued by uh, some uh, beef growers association in Texas or some cattle ranchers. I don't know, I'm not sure who it is, because she did a show about mad cow disease and was you know I guess it, the show exposed how these these you know the, the the sort of cannibalistic feeding practices that have, that have led to mad cow disease in the UK and elsewhere. And now she's being sued under this thing called the Food Disparagement Act. That's correct. So, I've heard about So, that. I mean, so um, someone like yourself, for instance, writing about this or propagating this information, you are sort of at legal risk, you know, rightly or wrongly, you are at legal risk, you know, by somebody who would come along and, you know, say, oh, you know, some lobbyist for the, food, you know, the irradiation lobby, whatever that is. Well, well fortunately, yeah. I don't have any money. So. <laughs> I know, I know. That's, that's, that's what we say, too. <laughs> so, Go but, ahead, sue us. We're broke anyways. But, but, you know, that is kind of frightening when you think about, let's face it, Oprah Winfrey is a pretty powerful person. Yeah, and if, straight, yeah. You know, if they can muzzle her, uh, that tells you the economic forces that are involved here. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, this may be a good time for me to plug an organization that I certainly support and help out. I, you know, I don't want to be pretending that I'm a spokesman for them, but they, they've definitely given me a lot of great information on what's going on with the food. It's, it's called the Great Boycott. It was actually formed by John Rapport, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, investigative journalist who wrote AIDS Incorporated, the scandal of the century, and he also has written a book about the Oklahoma City bombing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is, uh, you know, the, the website is HTTP, uh, of course, <laughs> colon, slash, slash, and then home.earthlink.net, slash, tilde, I think that's what you call that, right? The squiggly thing, yes, yeah. tilde. Yeah, the squiggly, tilde, whatever, alt, A-L-T-O, slash, boycott, dot, H-T-M-L. Mm-hmm. And uh, I definitely would recommend people visit that site. Um, th basically, they're about boycotting the big pharmaceutical companies that are involved in, uh, in creating bioengineering food, uh, genetic engineering food in mm -hmm. particular. But, you know, that's just part of the whole mix that, you know, one of them is Monsanto, who's not only just involved in that, but they're also involved in... Uh, Bovine in growth hormone. Yeah, exactly. And NutraSweet and what have you. It, you know, and it's really amazing when you see these, Yeah. I call them food com conspiracies. Yeah, you yeah, shut, shut up and eat this. Yeah, yeah, uh, nuclear waste, what was it? toxic sludge is good for you. That's kind of John mentality. Stauber's, yeah, that's John Stauber's bo other book. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that, that whole thing is definitely, uh, you see the same players again and again, and these are oftentimes the big supporters of fascism, you know, the... Mm -hmm. uh, Monsanto is very much involved with uh, an offshoot of the whole Nazi Germany organization. Um, Alex Constantine actually wrote about it in an article titled The Swirl and the Swastika, which is in his book Psychic Dictatorship in the USA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, once when you start looking at this stuff, you see an even bigger picture that, uh, that cannot be ignored. And, it, you know, it all ties together very well. Mm -hmm. Now what so about I definitely would recommend people visit the Great Boycott site, and I would also recommend people start thinking about what they eat because, you know, death squads in, in South America are uh, even, you know, if Vince Foster was murdered or not, you know, these are very amusing and, and certainly important to degree, but all in all, they don't affect you personally as much as what you eat every day. So mm -hmm. I'd say in many ways this is the most important conspiracy is going. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting. All right, we're going to take another break. All right. And we'll be back with Robert Sterling of The Conformist. Stay locked on. <laughs> Fish, 
wish I was right the first time. Now, Gabby don't know nothing about income tax. I do, too. I do, too. I know that you better take care of that income tax. You better take care of it. Because if you don't, the government can force you. They sure can force you. How can they do that? How? By the law of the freedom of the seas. The freedom of the seas. Freedom of the seas. How you figure that, Gabby? If you don't pay that tax, the government going to seize you and put you where you ain't got no freedom. That's freedom of the seas if I ever it. Calling all butt kicking, heart breaking, money making females on the internet. Get down with Minx, the feminine product that keeps you fresh. We're talking your health, your wealth, your relationships, and your sanity with your hosts, Shannon, Kelly, and Janice. So join us for Minx. It's the guilt free pleasure for girls in the know. Only on the Pseudo Online Network. Hackers on http colon slash slash pseudo dot com. Join us on our chat line at irc.pseudo.com or post a message on the hackers message board. Powered by standardized free language and completely relational. Connect and listen to us live at pseudo.com. Hackers. Join us for the ultimate Star Trek adventure. Simon and Schuster proudly presents Star Trek. Star Trek. The novel experience. The novel experience. Only on the Pseudo Online Network. To the final frontier. 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 This is Q104.3 Music. This is the Pseudo Online Network. La 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 la. This is Q104.3 Music. This is the Pseudo Online Network. I'm Carol. Hey, Carol. You, you, you got a neat, far-ass show. Thanks. And it's great. This is Q104.3 Music. This is the Pseudo Online Network. Pseudo! The Pseudo Online Network. Okay, Spanky, we're back on the Infinity Factor with Robert Sterling. Now, Robert, um, be, uh, during the break, Ian had a question that he wanted to ask you, so I'm going to put him on the mic and let him take it away here. Yeah, hey, Robert. Hey. Um, yeah, I had a question about irradiated food. I had heard about it from a friend at one time who uh, explained to me that irradiated food had to go through a legalization process in which the, a symbol called the radula, which um, alerted consumers to the fact that the food was irradiated, was introduced to southern parts of the country uh, less, uh, shall we say, polit politically reactionary in that, uh, from that standpoint than the, the, uh, the left or right coast. And, uh, for a period of time in which um, it was appropriate and then it was allowed to legally be um, distributed throughout the country with no radula uh, s signifier. And, and wasn't the radula some cartoon character? Uh, would certainly uh, fit what they did. I, I know that they had to, uh, originally the FDA said that it had to be, say, something like pica wave treated, which is not a word. Pica wave treated? Tyco? Yeah, they basically made up. As some in the kind moon? <laughs> statement which had nothing to do with any any history so people would see that mm -hmm. unless they knew the recent created name they would have no clue what was going on it's it's, it's a little bit catchier than nuke treated with nuclear waste yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think treated with nuclear waste is kind of hard to sell I, I think what's even more disturbing however is with this recent change in which uh not just spices but now meats and fruits and vegetables will be treated with it is that according to the LA Times itself in, the, in their basic puff piece pro-nuclear piece on the subject, uh, they state that because of consumer resistance, uh, it won't necessarily go into strong effect right away, but the first places that they're going to be using this irradiated food will be in hospitals and daycare centers. That's from the LA Times. That's, that's amazing. That's very comforting. Yeah, that basically they're going to let children and the sick be guinea pigs on 
this huge billion dollar campaign for the nuclear industry. Hey, well, that's the way it should be. This is America. Yes, so, exactly. So now uh, you wanted to talk about Nike also, and I, I make I wanted to make sure we got that in. Yeah, what's what's well, going on with that situation right now? Um, well, basically, nothing really has changed. Uh, Nike is trying to create some more propaganda to convince people that uh, they're trying to change stuff. In fact, a few months ago, I believe they were pulling out of, of Indonesia, uh, certain plants in Indonesia, and they were making it sound like it was because of human rights abuses, when in fact, what had happened was that uh, apparently the minimum wage in in Indonesia had been raised. So well, in to, fact, to six or seven cents. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Those, those six or seven cents really hurt the people in Nike. So yeah, they they basically use that as an excuse. Uh, this is my opinion, as an excuse to pull out mm -hmm. have to you make it seem like they were actually doing something good for once. Have you visited or seen the Nike Town on have 50, I? on Fifty Seventh Street in New York City? No, I have not. It is what it is the hugest. It's just a monolithic. Uh, display. I mean, it's just it's it's cap it's capitalism. It's my worst nightmare of of capitalism. It's this huge, huge, huge. It's guerrilla marketing gone place. haywire. And it's and you, I walked in this place and, I, and my heart just dropped. They've got huge video screens and they've got dumb waiters that bring your your tennis shoes up when you order them. And it's just a really unnecessary display and 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 waste of money. And, and I was there with a friend of mine and his girlfriend, and she's an architect. And I said to her, you know. Anka, how much do you think this place cost to build? And she was like, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 million dollars. In fact, it was 80 million that that building cost. Well, 80 million dollars. <laughs> well, so, uh, uh, I guess you have to do something with all that money you're saving on uh, exploiting the workers in the third world. Yes, yes. Here's, here's a bowl of rice and a gun in your back, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, just do it means something completely different to them. So now, now we're 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 gonna have to wrap up here, and I wanted to uh, ask you about who's going to be December's Beast of the Month. Yes. Uh, first of all, let me quickly explain what the Beast of the Month is. It's an award that actually the idea came from Ruffin Prevost of Periscope. Mm -hmm. He gave me the idea, and the the basic idea is the person who the previous thirty days uh, best pr best promoted the forces of darkness in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and of course. This has to do very much with the conformist, and I may also do a quick plug for Kirby, the conspiracy boy, which you can find out more uh, at, at home.earthlink.net uh, slash Pelda Scott Rose, S-C-O-T-T-R-O-S-E, slash Kirby.html. And this is Kirby, the conspiracy theory boy. Yeah, Kirby, the conspiracy boy, our, our cute little icon. Uh, anyways... Having done that cheap, shameless plug there, uh, the Ouch. December Beast of the Month is Terry Gaynor. He is the director of Illinois State Police. Uh huh. And I don't know if you followed at all the uh, what is known as the Roby Ridge case or the Shirley Allen. Uh, yeah, I was, I've been following it from your list. Yeah, well, basically there is this woman who, uh, for whatever reasons, and there's a lot of theories as to what was really going on involving. Uh, money blackmail, you know, attempts to ex get money from from her by family members, but basically, uh, family members requested that she be investigated or examined to decide if she was mentally competent or not. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the Illinois Police Department went to her door and said, "We want to take you in and have you have a psychological test." And she did what I think anyone would do if the police department came to their house and said. We want to take you in and examine if you're psychologically uh, stable or not. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, get the fuck out of my way. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently they tear gassed her. Um, How, and she uh, shot at them, although she did not hit them. And the whole thing escalated into this whole 39-day standoff. Uh, 39, of course, is an interesting number. Uh, is a number of buildable... Bilderberg leaders. Uh, it's the number of people who supposedly committed suicide at Heaven's Gate, and it is, of course, three times 13. I just throw that in to make people think that perhaps there's some sort of illuminastic uh, quality to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. In any case, after the 39 days of mm -hmm. standoff, she was uh, she was captured, and since then she's been uh, 
and she has to pay for this. She ha she's basically been uh, in the care of the Illinois state government, and they're trying to supposedly investigate if she's mentally competent or not, and she's refusing. Uh, but what Terry Gaynor really deserves it for is if you follow the whole case, he has done the predictable mind control propaganda to basically demonize her, make her seem psychologically unstable, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to promote what basically is a huge violation of, of human rights. Mm -hmm. How old is Shirley Allen? I believe she was, she was like 50, I believe, somewhere in her late 40s, early 50s, which is kind of odd if this woman is so psychologically unstable. Um, you know, she apparently had been able to take care of herself for quite a long time, and, mm -hmm. you know, that she was able to, with 39 days, having her power uh, turned off and no food in her house, mm -hmm. managing to survive. Yeah, and probably loud disco music played all night long and lights blasted into her yeah. house and all the same things that they did to the folks. Um, at Waco, at yeah. At Waco, yeah. And, uh, you know, that she managed to survive all this tells me that she was pretty, pretty damn psychologically stable. and. Mm -hmm. I would right. definitely say she's much more sane than the uh, the police that were doing the sent to deal with her. Yeah, that's true. Her. So what? No, we're going to have to wrap up now. What was the name of the uh, beast of the month again? Terry Gaynor. Okay. He's the director of the Illinois State Police. Congratulations, Terry. Okay. Keep now one more time work. before we go, tell the people what your email address is and how they can get to your thing and make it like in the next ten seconds. Okay, Robolini, R O B A L I N I at AOL dot com. Write me with the phrase "I need to conform with K." Okay. Robert, thanks very much for being on the show. Stay on the line. I'm going to talk to you afterwards. This is yeah. the Infinity Factory. Good night. See you, Robert. And we'll go harder, faster, higher in space, deeper in the sea, the greatest generation in the history. And Why don't you say something or hang up? The preceding program is copyrighted under the Pseudo Online Network 1997. Any rebroadcast or repurposing of this program in part or whole is strictly prohibited. Pseudo.